but how exactly does one go about crafting a character? Not talking about the initial spark, inspiration can come from literally anywhere, and a character can be anyone or anything. Whatever the writer dreams up can be made to work in capable hands, but after we have that spark of inspiration, we have this basic concept for the character, we may have a neat character design in mind, how does one elevate that idea from random scribblings into an actual character? The way I see it, there are basically four questions a writer needs to ask themselves. The answers will come together to form a core, a solid foundation for both the character and their journey. And just like life is a linear line through time, I like to arrange these questions into a chronological formation. The first question is, where does the character come from? This is the backstory, who the character was before the beginning of the story, their past experiences, their relationships, their influences, everything that made the person who they are today. Out of the four questions, this is the least important in terms of screen time. It's not absolutely necessary to reveal this to the audience, it depends on the style and mood the writer is going for, how much time they have to allocate, and just how much mystery is appropriate. However, it's a good idea to come up with a solid, coherent, detailed history for the character, even if you are never going to show it. If for nothing else, it helps to keep the rest of the story consistent. Anytime the writer needs to come up with an action, reaction, a line of dialogue, Anything the character does, they can always refer back to their history, where does the character come from, and therefore, the second question, where is the character today? This is the status quo, the character in their everyday existence, their personality, their passions, their philosophy, their routines, their occupation, their relationships to friends and family, this is quite self-explanatory. The more you can establish about the character, the more the audience gets to understand them. Whenever the character's actions can be traced back to their core attributes, cause and effect, the fictional person comes closer to being believable, relatable, actual, real person. Humans don't do anything without a reason, even the most minor interactions are guided by who we are. Not just the things we say or do, but the way we say and do those things, how we live our life, and how we face the future. Speaking of which... Question 3. Where is the character going? This is just another way to say, what does the character want? Do they have some kind of grand hopes and dreams? Do they have some kind of problem that needs fixing? Basically, what is the character's driving motivation? This is especially important for central characters of the narrative. If the character we follow has nothing to work towards, then there really is no story. Unless you are intending to create the most mundane slice of nothing ever happens plot, there should be some kind of end goal for the tale so to speak. It's notably less important for side cast. Many times minor characters play a purely functional role in the story. No reason to write a detailed destiny for every random shopkeep and the like with two lines. Now the fourth and final question is arguably the most important. What stands in the character's way? What is the thing that prevents the character from simply doing what they want? Some kind of antagonistic force, a rival going after the same price, the characters lacking skill level, a psychological issue they need to conquer, societal expectations. Every story requires some kind of obstacle for the characters to overcome. This is the one thing that draws the audience's interest. Drama, conflict, uncertainty, heroes facing impossible odds, all that inspiring stuff. If there is nothing that can even possibly stop the character from succeeding, 
then the story is just the character doing one thing after another with no real stakes. This kind of story structure is one step away from those aimless ramblings by that one senile relative you have. Like the time I caught the ferry over to Shelbyville? I needed a new heel for my shoe. So, I decided to go to Morganville, which is what they call Shelbyville in those days. So I tied an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time. Now, to take the ferry cost a nickel, and in those days, nickels had pictures of bumblebees on them. Give me five bees for a quarter, you'd say. So here we have it, a simple roadmap for anyone to follow. If a writer is able to offer a compelling answer for all these questions, and follows through consistently, then I can't see any reason why the end result wouldn't be at the very least a functional story. Of course, these are the barest of the bare building blocks. The thing that separates the good from the great is the specific execution of ideas. What is really neat is that you can actually establish all of this in a single scene, such is the case as we get fully introduced to Vander. There's some shady dealings going on in the tavern, local merchant is getting shafted by a pair of fuggish traders, and Vander steps in to set things right. You folks need anything? Leave us. You sure about that? Sounded to me like- Piss off. Oh. I think I know what you need. You don't seem to listen, Tom. A bit of advice. Don't threaten the guy who pours the drinks. So who is Vander? Confident, calm, assertive, charismatic, carrying himself with just the tiniest bit of good-humored swagger. He is a respected member of the community, an unofficial leader type, Nothing about this event is new or remarkable to him, he is used to putting out these kinds of small fires. We even get hints about his past, a possibly violent path, gaining him a gruesome nickname. So you're Vander. Hound of the Underground. I expected something younger. We were expecting traders who would honor their word, so I guess we're all disappointed. And his infamy reaches even beyond the borders of Piltover. These outsiders have heard of him at least in passing. Vander's fame gains him powerful sway, even though his desire for violence is firmly in the past. The Hound of the Underground may bear his fangs, but that is only to establish dominance. Nowadays, all that Vander wants is to uphold peace in the Undercity, to protect his community, to do all that is in his power to make sure his kin are treated fairly. How about you just give Huck the rest of what you own, and I'll let you walk out of here in one piece. Even without the added context of the opening scene, this conversation alone establishes all the core aspects about Vander. This back and forth lasts just over a minute, and we end up with a fully characterized person with a clear past, present, and future. All with the power of dialogue. Chef's kiss, 10 out of 10, perfect use of screen time. But what about the most important part? What obstacle threatens this peace Vander is so vehemently trying to uphold? The fact that his immediate family are a bunch of rebellious rascals? and everything that comes with it. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for sticking around for this long. And a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon, as well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt, and Six Stars. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.